The British hill climb season takes place between September and October and to the uninitiated it involves very short, very intense time trials up hills that are typically between one minute and ten minutes long. Hill climbs are a very British tradition with no such real culture existing in any of the other major cycling nations. If you were to try and explain the logic to a French or Italian person as to why you would drive four hours to do a one minute long time trial at Monsel Head, they'd probably think you were a little bit strange. And this eccentricity extends further as surely only in Britain would we consider it perfectly appropriate to put on a spread of cakes worthy of the Bake Off tent at events where being as skinny and as lean as possible are the main factors that affect performance. I decided to throw myself into the hill climbing season. I wanted to immerse myself in this cycling subculture and find out what the appeal is. For many, travelling a long distance to race at 9am on a Sunday morning in cold British autumnal weather with a lung-busting effort up a brutally steep climb is not exactly what most people constitute as fun. I also wanted to explore what it would take to succeed in these short but very intense events. If I stopped eating cake, trained like a pro and got a mega light bike, could I go from zero to hero? Probably not, but I thought I'd give it a go anyway. The culture of modifying bikes is a large part of the sport and for me it's quite similar to the sort of hot rod or boy racer culture within cars. So in order to pimp my ride and help me build the ultimate hill climb bike, James Horton from Cannondale came down to visit the Cycling Weekly Workshop to help me put it together. One of the coolest things about hill climbs is the bikes. And because they fall under the regulations of cycling time trials, there is no UCI weight limit, which means we can go as light as possible. But at the same time, I don't want to build a bike that is, handles like a noodle and feels like a piece of spaghetti. It's got to be functional, it's got to be stiff, and it's got to work well. Fortunately, we've got this, which is a rather special frame, which Cannondale has kindly supplied, and Fat Creations has done an amazing job of stripping the paint off to reduce the weight even more. So it's a, a Cannondale Super 6 Evo black ink high mod frame, which is already incredibly light. But by taking the paint off, we've saved almost 300 grams off the frame and fork. And so for frame and fork, it's now coming in at just 940 grams. Working for Cycling Weekly means that I'm in a really fortunate position to try and get hold of some of the best and lightest components out there. So that's exactly what I did. When it comes to lightweight wheels, there's one brand that instantly springs to mind, and that is Lightweight, the German brand. And they were kind enough to offer to lend me a pair of their absolutely amazing Lightweight Meilenstein Obermeyer tubulars. Oh. This is rather exciting. Just taken a delivery. Oof. Wowzers. So these are lightweight Meilenstein Obermeyer tubular wheels. Like, <laughs> really light. So the great thing about these is they're not just incredibly light, they're less than a kilo a pair. They're not actually especially aero, even though they're deep. What, what they are is incredibly light and incredibly stiff. And the reason for that is the way that you have these oversized um, flanges on the hubs and also the angle of the rim shape, so it's a V-shape, and the angle is exactly the same as, as the spoke coming into the flange of the hub. So the carbon spoke is, sits perfectly flat against the rim, which just results in a ridiculously light, but also very, very stiff wheel. I can't wait to get these on the bike. Something's just dawned on me, which is quite amusing, which is these wheels are worth more than my car. <laughs> just absolutely ludicrous. I, I just hope I don't break them. 
I just <laughs> want to be so careful with these. Lightweight told me that Lance Armstrong, during the peak of his career, before everyone knew he took drugs, um, actually asked to use lightweight wheels and asked to be sent some. And uh, they made him pay for them. <laughs> so uh, lightweight have lent me some wheels, but they made Lance pay. So yeah, <laughs> how cool is that? That, I mean, yeah, that basically makes me better than Lance Armstrong. To save further weight, I opted for a single ring setup and I used the Cannondale SI SL2 hologram chain set, which is one of the lightest and stiffest on the market. It was also compatible with the Cannondale frame, which made life easy. I also wanted a power meter on the bike, but power meters can add quite a bit of weight. So to try and create something really, really light, I sent off the non-drive side hologram crank arm to Canada where 4i fitted their really light 25 gram precision power meter to the non-drive side crank. And this created quite possibly what is the lightest power meter available. So that was really cool. Other cool components on the bike were the Seller Italia C59 saddle, which weighed just 61 grams, and uh, also the EE Cycle Works brakes, which are really light. Now, you actually have to have two brakes on a hill climb bicycle for the CTT rules, so that's why I had to have brakes on, in case you were wondering. I've gone for a KMC uh, 11 SL Gold chain, SL standing for uh, super light and it's 245 grams. These KMC chains are actually a little bit lighter than SRAM and Jura Ace chains, so we're saving a bit of weight. Plus, it's gold, so it's gotta be faster, and also it means that Mr. T will also really like my hill climbing bike. Look at that. There you go, Mr. T. All right. Specialist hill climb bikes are not just about buying super light components. There's also a really strong culture in the sport of modifying your bike. So I decided to sort of have a go at that as well. And uh, a common modification that has existed within the British hill climbing scene is chopping bars. So I thought I'd try that as well. I think these handlebars are like 300 quid. <laughs> sure both the same length. There we go. I found this quite amusing, but chopping the drops off only saved about 40 grams. <laughs> but you know, I guess every little helps. Another modification, got some, uh, some lighter weight headset bearings, which will hopefully save a few grams. So every little helps. So they're 33 grams and the old ones are taken out. Forty-eight grams. Good fifteen grams saved there. Boo. I really thought about the specification of this bike in quite a lot of detail and tried to really pick the best components I could get my hands on. So there's loads of really, really other cool bits that I haven't mentioned here. But we've made a video specifically about the bike that goes into detail about all the component choices. So if you want to see the bike in more detail and find out more about the bits that I chose, then there's actually a link to a separate video in the description below that you can click on. What was the ultimate hill climb bike like to ride? Well, riding a bike that's two or three kilos lighter than what you used to is an absolute revelation. The acceleration off the line is not just noticeable, it feels incredible. Uh, I was a bit worried and apprehensive that being such a light bike, it might want to wheelie all the time and feel twitchy, but I had no such issues. The other thing that struck me about the bike was how stiff and rigid it was. The combination of the Cannondale frame set with the SI SL2 cranks and lightweight Meilenstein wheels made for an incredibly stiff package. And I had no issue with flex or brake rub at all, even when doing really high power efforts um, with really high torque loads. So typically something like 630 watts for a minute and I was having no problem at all. The bike felt amazing. So I've got my ultimate hill climb bike, but as good as it is, it isn't gonna pedal itself. So I've decided to enlist the help of a top hill climbing coach in a bid to 
try and turn me from zero to hero. When it comes to hill climbs, I am pretty inexperienced. So I've sought the help of Matt Clinton, who's a former national champion of the hill climb, and he's a regular attendee of the podium. So we've come to Mike Vaughan Cycles uh, in Kenilworth to see Matt, who's hopefully gonna be the uh, Mr. Miyagi to my Danielson, or the uh, Master Yoda to my Luke Skywalker. Hi, Matt. Nice to meet you. And you. Yeah, so let's go and have a chat yep. and Talk find out what clients. I need to do. Hill climb training, you've got such a short window after, say, a good season like yours when you've been time trialling and the Hope route, um, but you build on that very quickly. Typically, September's when I start training hill climbs, it's once all the um, time trials usually finish and then straight in, sort of following week after your last time trial, you start hill climbing. You've got your base of big miles, um, and you need to hit yourself with a load of hills or a load of intervals and turbo trainer. How exactly can uh, you help me? Right, first off, take anything off your bike that you don't need. Right. So, bottle cages you don't need. You're not going to need to take a drink on a four minute climb. You need saddle pack, for example, pump, you don't need. This is just going to, it's going to make a handful of seconds difference, but it's going to make a difference between you and the next person. They're timed to a hundredth of a second. I've got to say, some of my best ever performances, you're not going to like this, we're after having a takeaway the night before. Right. <laughs> what kind of takeaway? Chinese. I do like this. Chinese. What are, you, what are you talking about? Of course I like This sounds great. Um, yeah, I just went and set an absolutely ridiculous course record one year. I had Chinese and slept on my friend's floor. So That's the secret. secret. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm quite worried at the, the idea of like, I've seen people be sick when they've done hill climbs. Yep. So what, what do you sort of eat just before or how? Gels. Gels. Typically, I do like to have say an energy bar or something, you usually need that sort of by mid-morning anyway to keep you going. Is there a thing where, a danger that you need to be aware of, of like nervous drinking and taking on too much fluid? Because it's I all weight, so, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Um, so every, obviously every litre that you're drinking is a kilo. Yeah. Um, and that's a kilo that you've got to get up to the top of the climb. How soon before your start time do you finish your warm-up? You don't want to get too cold sitting on the uh, start line. Yeah. So, all depends on if you've got to swap wheels over from yeah. your turbo or whatever. I typically try and finish maybe mm. within 10 minutes before your start time. You need that time to get to the line, to strip your jacket off, strip your leg warmers off. You need to give yourself enough window to do those bits to get yourself to the line, but as close to the end of that window that you can. Where do we go from here then? I've got my Training Peaks account. Yep. Like, what's, what's the plan? You can sit on the turbo trainer for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> we can pretty much get a whole session done within 40 minutes, pretty much. Um, so it's not going to take much time out of your day. Quality, not quantity. Quality, not quantity. Nice. <laughs> Cheers, Matt. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> my first open hill climb events were in mid-September and I wasn't at full fitness at this point, but I was still, and I was still trying to lose some weight as well. But I was building towards the end of October, and I felt like it was necessary to get in as much uh, experience and practice as possible in as many events as possible. So tomorrow I'm doing a hill climb, and so I make my breakfast the night before, so it's all ready because it's an early start. So I'm making my special hill climb breakfast, which is the same as my, it's my pre-race breakfast. I have this for hill climbs, but I also do it for time trials and, you know, whatever event I'm doing, this has become my rituals. So my pre-race bircher, what goes into it? It's 50 grams of oats, 150 grams of uh, milk, or which can be almond milk or like this stuff. I've got it's coconut milk. And then I grate a whole apple, put that in there, 25 grams of raisins, pinch of cinnamon, and then optional extras, whatever you want. If you want a bit sweeter, maybe a bit of honey or a bit of apple juice, or um, I'll put some chia seeds in there. And then I'll finish it off at the top with some blueberries and uh, some seeds. And then bang that in the fridge, leave it overnight, and it all, the oats will soak and get all nice and soft overnight with all the liquid in there. And then in the morning, you can eat it hot or you can eat it cold. Um, I sometimes heat it up in the microwave and they sort of taste like apple pie because you've got that classic combination of like cinnamon, apple and raisin, so 
I have this three hours before my event, so it has plenty of time to get in there and work its magic. Just out in the Peak District with uh, my mate Jordan and uh, my brother Guy, and um, Matt Clinton gave me one of his bits of advice that he gave me was that uh, he said, um, Recon you must. Because he's like Yoda and that, yeah. Anyway, uh, so that's what we've done. We've come to Mam Tor in the Peak District National Park and we're going to ride up it as Recon because we're going to do a hill climb here in a few weeks. Full gas, yeah, guys? Well, for you. <laughs> <laughs> Probably still beat me to the top. But yeah. You're, you're going to go with full gas, guy? I'll give it a go. Nice. Right. Exactly. See you at the top then. This is just before the summit. We've got about 500 meters to go from here. And it's steep. So, so steep. And this is when it really starts to bite. How's that? How's that? It's grim, isn't it? And I don't think, I think Guy's still got a quicker time than me up there, so. Oh man. I've felt quite slow up there today. Hopefully I'm going to get faster. But it's good to have done it because it's like a benchmark. Now I've got a benchmark. You're going to get faster. Yeah, hopefully. well, hopefully I get faster, yeah. Having a 4.7 kilogram mega super light amazing bike and being trained by Master Yoda is great, but it's all for nothing if you're going to continue slamming down the pastries, the cakes and the burgers. So, unfortunately, I was going to have to improve my diet if I wanted to lose weight and succeed at hill climbs. If you're a trick-or-treater and you come to uh, Alan Murchison's house, you presented with this fishbowl of uh, SIS gels. <laughs> really the most disappointed kids, but really hyperactive off all the caffeine. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Alan Murchison once again, the performance chef, and hopefully he's going to be able to help me uh, with my diet for hill climbing. So, hill climbing, I want to obviously be as lean as possible and as light as possible, but I still need to fuel myself for workouts. So, what, what do you suggest? Okay, it's, it's one of these things, it's all about power to weight, isn't it? You know, you want to be as light and as lean as possible, um, but still have that explosive power. I think the thing with, with hill climb training is, you know, it's not a huge volume, but it's really intense. So you don't need lots and lots of carbohydrate, but you're needing really good quality protein. I need mean, to make sure you're fit and healthy as well, because obviously you're stressing your system because it's really, really hard, short efforts. Take on a, on a bit of a classic, which is a tuna niçoise. We're omitting the potatoes because we don't need a starchy carbohydrate. Green beans, tomatoes, boiled eggs, olives, uh, white anchovies, Tuna, again, this is available in the supermarket. That piece of tuna cost me £1.50, which for Royal Line Cut tuna is pretty good. Nice. And a few capers. What we're going to do with that is actually just sear the tuna off, then deglaze a the pan. That's a chefy term. But basically, just get all the juices out of the pan with a touch of soya and a touch of olive oil, and that will be the dressing for the, for the dish. So really simple. All we need to do is cook the green beans. There'll be three minutes. A couple of boiled eggs. Job done. Nice. You see that's sesame oil, and so I saw a spoon this over here. So this is going to be almost like the seasoning. That's nice. kind of what you're looking for with fresh tuna. Okay, look at that. It's just perfect. Pro. Pro. Still got it. There is tuna reçoise. What's up? Two and a half, three minutes. Yeah. So well, quick. Really high in protein. Really high in protein. You've obviously got the eggs in there. You've got the anchovies in there. You've got the tuna. Um, I actually could cook that quicker than it takes you to do a hill climb. <laughs> <laughs> the nutritional demands of Matt Clinton's hill climb training were completely different to anything I'd done before. So compared to the training I was doing for my Project 49 time trialling, I needed far fewer carbs because the volume was much less, but the intensity was arguably quite a bit higher. So I still needed some carbs for when I was fueling for those important key sessions. Another little cool detail was things like to avoid too much salt intake, especially on the day before a race, because by consuming too much salt, that would actually lead to more water retention and make you a lot heavier. I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a tough job this. Yeah, it tastes rubbish, mate. Rubbish. Yeah. I love it then. Total crap, that. <laughs> 
No, it's, it's amazing. It tastes great. Right, cheers for that. Bye, mate. Okay, there. Cheers, mate. Bon right, let's go do some hill climbs. <laughs> Good luck. At the start of the hill climb season, I was 70 to 71 kilograms, and through some careful training and disciplined eating, I was able to get down to 67 and a half kilograms without losing any power. However, the temptation to demolish the odd Jaffa cake or almond croissant is strong, and I think I, in hindsight, could have been maybe a kilo lighter. However, I'm only human and an amateur, so I'm not gonna live like a monk all the time. One of the first events I went to do was the urban hill climb up Swains Lane, which is a really short power climb because it's only about a minute and 20 or a minute and a half long. So it sort of suits really punchy riders who can knock out quite a bit of power. So just at the urban hill climb now and um, it's a cool event like there's people who are taking it really seriously as a hill climb but, and there's people who are doing it as fun as well so it's a nice, nice vibe. Hopefully uh, this will give me some good experience along with some of the other events that I'm doing. I might be sick at the end but hopefully I won't be. One thing's for sure, if I turn up to an event like this and I win it, then the reason why I've won it is because no one better turned up. <laughs> I'm truly honest with myself. If I feel at the end that I could not have given it any more and I'm chundering at the top and uh, I can't see and I'm blacking out because of oxygen debt, then I'll be, uh, I'll, you know, I can't do any more than that. I'll be pleased with that, so that'll be good. Alright, warm up then. was a bit laboured on the steep bit. I probably should have gone into a slightly easier gear. But, yeah. I have no idea what time I did. It's pretty awesome when you come up through that bit though. And there's like all the people cheering. It's a well good like atmosphere. It's just amazing how like, how quickly you do it and then that's it, it's done. I will, uh, I started out the saddle, power was good. And then I was seated on the slightly shallower part and I was going pretty well there. I was pumping out like about 600 plus and then went to get out the saddle on the steeper bit and burnt out a little bit on the steeper bit. Power was like a bit lower, 500 to 600. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how I did. I'm not sure, but the crowd definitely helped on the steep a bit. That pizza we had last night, I was just weighing <laughs> on my mind the whole day, thinking, oh, I'm going to be heavy today. Yeah, it might be, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, 140. 140. So, yeah. Oh, a bit slow. I want to be faster. I need to, need to do some more training and lose a bit of 
get a bit leaner, giving me a bit of motivation. I would have liked to have gone a good sort of 10 seconds faster than that, so I don't have the biggest legs in the world, so <laughs> my little twiglet legs are not the most powerful in terms of peak power. <laughs> More training required. More training, less eating. It's gonna be grim. I'm sort of glad it's over, but at the same time, I feel like I want to have another go. It's over so quickly, like, I just reckon I could go faster than that. But, I don't know, it's all practice, learning how to hurt yourself. But yeah, we're gonna get some lunch and then we've got another hill climb tomorrow, so I'll recover for that. Putting it all into practice, I kind of, in my head, I thought, I'd done quite well in open time trials this year, so I sort of expected that maybe it'd be possible to consistently get top tens in hill climbs as well, but, I quickly found out that hill climbs are hard, <laughs> like really hard. Halfway through the hill climb season now and I've, yeah, I mean, I've been getting my head kicked in every week going up against like really good guys. It's the same people up and down the country going to the same hill climbs and it's cool because you get to meet these people every week and you see them week in, week out and it's the same people and you know, I've sort of got to know a few of them and it's great to see how competitive they are. Uh, but. I have been getting my head kicked in every weekend. <laughs> like, I would like, I would like to get a result. There's still a few weeks left of the hill climb season. I've still got a few events to go, so hopefully I can just keep on cracking on with uh, with the training, which is going well. Try and keep the weight down, and um, hopefully break into that top ten and get a result. That's my goal now. My goal is to try and get a top ten in an open hill climb, and then. Um, in one of the good ones and then yeah I'll be happy with that I think that's quite a good achievement for like a first season so yeah right must uh, must crack on <laughs> I'm here with my brother Guy and Guy's girlfriend Rachel and we've just done our local hill climb up north near Donny um, because the uh, Tick Hill Velo one and this has been this has been a monumental occasion because my younger brother Guy let's just say the Padawan. <laughs> yeah, the Padawan. <laughs> yeah, the the, uh, the apprentice is no longer the apprentice. <laughs> He's He's like, I know. Oh God, I've just been beaten by my little brother for like the first. <laughs> this is just not going well. This hill climb season. <laughs> is, uh, yeah, it's not it's not as easy as I thought it would be. <laughs> right, we don't know where we've come yet. The only thing I do know is that guy beat me. So we're gonna go and, and uh, this cake it. afterwards. So. Yeah, <laughs> Rachel might have beaten me I'll as well. Dragon <laughs> drizzle cake. Yeah, so let's go. Yeah, let's go uh, do that. I don't think I'm allowed cake after that performance, but. There you go. Post hill climb cake. <laughs> I sort of persevered and carried on training and entering hill climb races week in, week out. And crucially, I was getting better. I might not have been getting the results that I wanted, but my power was uh, increasing and I was getting PBs almost like every weekend. And crucially, I was enjoying it. All right, so I am in the Peak District near Home Firth and I've just done the Huddersfield Star Wheelers um, hill climb, which is on the Jackson Bridge course. Jackson Bridge is, it's like up round that noggin over there. So this is a famous event, like a lot of national champions uh, have won this event. It always attracts a very strong field. Chris Boardman has won it in the past. There was no chance of me having my name etched on the trophy next to Chris's <laughs> because uh, as I said, yeah, it's a very strong field here and I just wanted to do as well as I could do. One of the things I've started to learn is how important pacing is, but also pacing is a skill. It's easier said than done. When you get on the start line, the adrenaline's flowing. It's easy to overcook it at the start. It, it really is. And I did that on Mam Nick and several other events that I've done so far this, uh, this year. Today, I feel I paced it much better. So that is what I'm, I'm pleased with myself because I, I feel I've went well. And it's a hard climb to pace this because the gradient changes a lot. It's very steep, uh, it averages 10% over a mile. Yeah, I did about 415 watts for five minutes, which, you know, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with, good for me. Dan Evans is probably a good sort of 45 seconds faster than me. Um, 
who, who's won it today, then he's probably going to win the national. Even if you're not going to race, come and watch some of these hill climb events just to see how incredible some of the athletes are that do them. I'm not talking about myself in that category, by the way. <laughs> I am now going to uh, go have a homemade cherry bakewell. Spotted them in the uh, HQ when I was signing on and promised myself that I'd uh, treat myself to one if I did a good performance. So I'm pleased with how I went. So I'm going to go find those cherry bakewells. By the way, I don't, I don't know if you noticed this, but you know you're in Yorkshire when there's a bowling green <laughs> right behind you. Cracking bowling green, grommet. <laughs> love it, love it. So we're just at the, uh, on Bank Road in Matlock. I'm here with uh, my mate Joe. I'm not riding hill climb today, but we've come to watch my brother Guy, who's, uh, who's doing this one. And, um, yeah, I'm gonna cheer him on. Should be coming up in a minute. It's really steep, isn't it? It's a good view down it. Yeah, yeah. Go on, lad, go on. Go on. Dig in, guy. Go on, guy. Come on, guy. Keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Go on, guy. Smash it. You are? You're the fastest <laughs> you've asked, you've asked, still. The fastest so far, that's pretty good. I was dying yeah, towards this bit, I was like oh, yeah. grinding. Yeah. Good work mate. Cheers. Good job. Right. Hill climb season done for me. See ya. This weekend just gone was the Holly Lane uh, hill climb put on by Belper BC. I was really pleased with my performance because Felt like I pushed as hard as I could go. I felt like I've gone harder than I ever went before. Did a PB power about 460 watts for four minutes. Literally could taste that sort of iron taste in the back of your mouth at the top of the climb. I was completely like dead. I gave it everything. So I was pleased with myself in that respect. But then even better, icing on the cake, found I come 10th, which was great because it was a really strong field. The icing on top of the icing, of the cake, right? Check this out. Only got in the Cycling Weekly results, and I, yeah, I'm on the results pages of Cycling Weekly, which is, you might find this a little bit bizarre, even though I work for Cycling Weekly, I still get excited if I get in the results. <laughs> like, um, I remember the first time that I saw my name published in the results of Cycling Weekly, and that was way before I worked for Cycling Weekly. Um, and at the time I was, I remember being like, yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a cool thing. It's still, I still find it cool. So it doesn't happen as often as I'd like. <laughs> so, yes. Um, there we go. Onwards and upwards. In a bid to save even more weight, I've uh, come, come to get a haircut with my man Fraser here. So he sort me out. So this is uh, before. We'll see what it, what it is after. <laughs> I should have weighed myself before we did this. <laughs> should have seen what I'm going to say. <laughs> There we go, done the haircut now. There we go. Looking like we've saved quite a bit of weight. What do you reckon, about 50 grams there, Fraser, yeah? At least. Yeah. Could have saved those drops. Yeah, only <laughs> no no shot the drops off. You shouldn't have done it. reckon on more aero as well? Yeah? Definitely more aero. <laughs> there we go. Cheers, mate. Done. I've been battling through, and finally the end of the hill climb season was here. So I was absolutely determined to do as best as I could. I wanted to do my best performance of the season and absolutely turn myself inside out. So my final event was gonna be the Sussex Nomads hill climb up Ditchling Beacon on the 29th of October. Now, I had wanted to enter the national hill climb, which was taking place on the same day, but being a bit inexperienced through a schoolboy error, I'd missed the deadline. However, entering an event on Ditchling Beacon was really cool because it meant that I'd get a direct comparison to how I was prior to the hill climb season and all the special training. So before the hill climb season, I'd actually raced up Ditchling Beacon with my friends to see how fast I could go. And on that particular effort, I'd uh, done the climb in five minutes, 17 seconds with an average power of 395 watts and my heart rate was 182 beats per minute average as well, so pretty high. And at the time of doing that, 
I was 72 kilograms and I was doing it on a seven kilogram bike. So I was really excited to see what all the improvements would make and hopefully there would be an improvement. <laughs> so we're just in Ditchling Village Hall right now uh, in the nice little Sussex village of Ditchling. It's always bloody freezing. <laughs> like, why can't they do the hill climb season in summer? It's always like October, it's really cold, I'm really cold. I've kept my bar tape on till now because when you turn the handlebars, it like strikes the top tube, so it's just more to protect the top tube. But because uh, it's the last race of the season, bar tape's coming off. Save some, uh, save a load of weight. <laughs> bar tape adds a significantly surprising amount of weight. <laughs> So one of the big things with hill climbs is you don't have to wear a helmet. It's not actually in the rules to wear a helmet, so to save weight, people don't wear helmets for hill climbs. But uh, then that presents you with the sort of hill climbers dilemma of what do you wear. So caps are really popular, or casket to give it its proper name. But then it's like, how do you wear the casket? Do you wear it like peak forwards or where it like peak back or do you have some like luft going on there <laughs> or do you go like fresh prints no one does that or no cap as well but I think today I'm gonna go peak forward see what happens maybe it's less aero but we'll see <laughs> I've completely run out of excuses now because uh, I've got these new Giro shoes which are really, really light. So I've saved yet more weight. So yeah, that, the only bad thing is, yeah, I've got no excuses now. <laughs> For my final event of the season, I was hoping to get another top 10 placing and I was determined not to make any mistakes with regards to sort of technique or pacing. So I set off up the beacon with an initial burst to sort of get up to speed of around 550 watts and then set about trying to hold 450 watts average up the rest of the climb. And on some of the flatter sections, I was making sure to try and be as aerodynamic as possible. So I was trying to stay seated on those bits. And then there's a few ramps on Ditchling Beacon as well. And on the slight steeper ramps, I was sort of going up to about 500 watts. But overall, I felt like I'd learned a lot because my pacing uh, was a lot smoother on this climb than it had been arguably on other ones I'd done as well. And that meant that I was really good at holding the momentum all the way up. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck. Good luck. that quite well like at the start so I listened to uh, yeah. coach Matt's advice but uh, I think towards the end maybe could have just lifted it a little bit more but yeah sounds stupid considering how knackered I am but oh. right should we go to the uh, back to the start then and get some cake you up for that cameraman Alex, yeah. Nice one. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I want to have another go now. I feel recovered. <laughs> After I'd finished my run up Ditchling, I had no idea where I'd come or what I'd done. So I quickly got back to the HQ and uploaded my ride to Strava because I was hoping for a top 10, but I just really wanted to see what my time was as well. So I managed to go up Ditchling Beacon in four minutes, 30 seconds, which I was pretty pleased with. And uh, my average power was 451 watts. So irrespective of where I came, I was really pleased because that represented a massive improvement for me over what I'd done before and showed like 
all the hard work I'd, I'd put in, I felt like I'd, I'd succeeded. Alan, would you like to come up and uh, read out the winners? <laughs> And the second is Pat Wright. And the first was Oliver Bridgewood. Thanks to all the uh, like marshals and volunteers as well. Like it's a great event and like it's much appreciated if everyone giving up their time. So yeah. So I've just done the uh, Sussex Nomads Ditchling Beacon Hill Climb, which is the last event of the season, and uh, quite surprised that I've won. I'm obviously delighted that I've won as well, but quite surprised really. <laughs> I did quite well. Like, I paced it really well, which was good. So feels great to have won. I've got this cool mug, this is like a trophy, with the uh, ditchling on the side of it, which is quite nice. So I'll be having my coffee out of that later on. But uh, I think it's definitely because I took my bar tape off today. I think that's definitely why I won. That made all the difference. All like 90 grams of bar tape lost. So top tip for you there, take your bar tape off. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's the end of the season now, so it's uh, time to eat lots of cake. I'm just going to get really, really fat now. I'm, I'm actually really surprised that I won. <laughs> like, I've been entering these hill climbs and getting my head kicked in by all these big boys every week, just getting smashed and like desperately trying to get in the top 10. So what have I learned? Well, the hill climb season is a little bit mental. Although short, hill climbs are without doubt some of the most intense but rewarding events I've ever done on a bike. The, uh, the trepidation and the nerves at the start build out into this all-out max effort crescendo where you just get this euphoric rush of adrenaline that when you've finished the event it's over before you can think and then your body just doesn't know what to do with all that adrenaline. It's addictive. The atmosphere at hill climbs is great and they're also brilliant events to spectate too even if you don't want to ride them, I'd suggest go and watch one and cheer people on. Because one of the most endearing things in cycling is the idea of glory through suffering. And hill climbs encapsulate this perfectly. There's a really fun and friendly atmosphere with everyone cheering each other on, irrespective of your age, your ability or your fitness. There's just a really good sort of camaraderie and mutual respect. Irrespective of your ability, there's something immensely satisfying about finding your physical limit and hill climbs have the power to do that. I might not be the best, but I've been bitten by the bug and I'm already plotting my 2018 hill climb campaign. I hope you've enjoyed this video, so if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Cycling Weekly channel because in doing so, it helps us make more content like this in the future. But before I go, I just want to give a massive thank you to all the organisers and volunteers who help put on the hill climb events throughout the season because quite simply without them, this absolutely brilliant British tradition couldn't exist.